I done put 20 up under the sea. You need, you need, you need. Hey. I done put 20 inside the sea. You need, I pull up on you and I pop at your key. You need, I pull up your block and I pop at your B. You I hold out the coupe and I'm friends with the boots. You need, you need, you need. Since I wasn't young and I've been getting the door. You need, you need. I came my back in and I turn on the show. You need, you need. I want how to say it again, yeah. I did the way that you look at me. You did the way that I look at you. I just wanna grab on your The seat in the bins of Chanel clutch. The F in the give him a haircut. I roll up a salmon in the giant duck. That bounce on the d, bro. I don't gotta act like a gangster, she know. Don't. My bad will look like a pole. Yeah. My bad will look like a pole. I sit on clouds of the smoke. I'ma blow clouds of the smoke. Pardon me, pardon my soul. I crack a smile for the bowl. Hey. They eating in broad day. In that whole mouth like a cold gate. Yeah. Keep it a cold case. Man, this is Kirk. And this is Bird. It's Rusty Bird with a superstar football player from uh, proudly from Northern Virginia. We've got Bryce Duke with us today, the Washington Post 2021 All Met uh, High School Football Player of the Year. Welcome to the show, Bryce. How's it going? All right. Oh, wow. It's going well. Um, so, yeah, Bryce was the Offensive Player of the Year. And uh, Bryce, you're uh, you're a hokey, which uh, I am. Yes, sir. Proud to be one. Melinda or uh, Melendez Bird, Rusty's uh, younger brother, played linebacker for four years. You know, we're very excited that you're headed to Blacksburg, and you you said you're going on the 14th, right? Yep, I'm gonna be early enrolling so I can get there and just kind of get yep. started with the program. You know, get right into it. Good, good. That's great. So. We just want to start off. You you had an incredible senior year, you know, over twenty eight hundred yards, thirty six touchdowns, and you know I was looking at your career. Um, you averaged eight yards a carry, uh, you know, eighty four touchdowns. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit uh, just about Virginia Tech? As I told you, we we don't like to do the two four seven sports, which by the way we like that. But we don't like to do the recruit. We, we know you're a hokey. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you tell us, you know, why Virginia Tech, both from a football as far and if there's no football, Blacksburg, um, obviously it, I, I love the school. But your take, you know, you I can tell you're into being a hokey. So why don't you just give us that take? Yeah, I mean, th there's a lot of things that you know made Virginia Tech stand out to me um, when it comes to, I mean, the coaches. You know, even though we have a new coaching change, I still, you know, I love all the new coaches. I love all the old coaches. They just really put that culture in for me. Um, you know, just staying close to home, too. I mean, there's nothing like that. You know, family can come to my games and all that stuff. And honestly, the fan base. I mean, there's nothing like Blacksburg. There's nothing like the fan base. Um, like, it, it's just different. That's a place where I want to, you know, run the rock. That's where I want to, you know, farther my career. I mean, that's just that's why Blacksburg really stood out to me in the whole Virginia Tech program. Yeah, Virginia Tech is a special place, man. I know um, I've been associated with in terms of loving the football program now, you know, from when I was a child. But, you know, my brother playing there um, in the, the early 90s, uh, it's just a special place to have seen the program grow from what Frank Beamer did uh, mm -hmm. to all those consecutive bowls, playing in the national championship. Uh, it, it's just something that I, I, I've always loved. And, you know, I, I went to VCU, uh, which doesn't have a football program. So that was easy to, to matriculate and love Virginia Tech football. Uh, but I also went to UVA uh, for graduate studies and I support them, but it's nothing like that Virginia Tech football. Um, yeah. You feel like the fan base there, the environment, um, and then just the education and things you'll get there. Um, so we, I am definitely a, a, a big Hokey, but now also Bryce Duke fan. So uh, congratulations, young man. You have earned it. You worked very hard. Um, but can you tell, so we, we know you're, you're going to Virginia Tech. We, you're going to be starting there in a couple of weeks, but let's go back. Let's go back to 
when did you first start playing football? Like how, how old were you? Did, did you play any other sports first? Um, and what, what, how did you kind of gravitate to, to, to doing that? Got you. So, I mean, football and stuff like that has been in our family um, for a super long time. But for me, I started playing football, I think, right when I was able to. Um, okay. which I think it was around seven years old. It was tackle football for, like, the Knights or something like that. Um, but that wasn't the first sport that I ever played. The first sport that I ever played was soccer because I think you'd start I was playing. I soccer. There you go. Yeah, because I think you can play soccer when you're like five or something like that. Yeah. Which is what I started doing until I was old enough to play football. Um, yeah. And I actually also did play baseball growing up all the way until um, before high school I stopped. But I started playing pretty young. Yeah. Now, let me ask you. So, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. My, my, my kids, I, I actually, we, Kirk, I don't even think we had youth soccer growing up. I don't even remember knowing anybody that played or if there were any youth programs. But when we grew up, um, so I, I just don't remember that. But I, I was looking forward to when I had children, putting them in soccer. Because one, my, when my brother was at Virginia Tech, um, Kirk, do you remember the kicker from Kickatan? Um, Brian Reeves. Played, Brian Reeves, there you go. Yeah. So let me just say, my, I don't know if you ever played basketball or you ever hung out with Brian Reeves, but this this guy, he's one of the ones that I said, I want to put my kids in soccer. My brother and I talked about it. He was so athletic. Like, because of the soccer, he was a great high school soccer player. But I, And I started thinking about it, and, I, and one of the things that people may not understand is it, whether you play any other sport, soccer is a great foundational sport. Yeah, you just some people may think you're just running around, but you're running around and you're developing skills. You know, some of the foot hand eye coordination. Um, you have to be able to have short sprint bursts of speed. Then you have to have endurance. And and it's just a good way to get kids introduced to sports. So I, I know for me that all three of my kids, my daughter did travel soccer, but my son Justin, uh, he played that's a great sport to start. And then so from there you went to uh football. You played mm -hmm. um, baseball as well. How, how was it early on in football? Did you, or even in soccer, were you immediately like the best athlete, the best kid out there? Or, you know, what were those early years of football like? Were you always a running back? You know, some, sometimes mm -hmm. the best athlete out there, they'll put a quarterback. Uh, that's, see, that's what I was when I was younger, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I mean, when I played soccer, I was honestly too young to really tell what was going on. <laughs> but yeah but when I started playing football I played quarterback um and I'll never forget I think my first two ever like snaps were touchdowns it was in like a little jamboree we did in Ashburn I think okay. that's what really um you know made me fall in love with the sport and stuff like that um but that's about it really yeah you were one okay. of those third graders when I remember my son played nobody passed. So you were one of those third graders when you got around the end, you were gone. Yeah, yeah, let's just get, get the edge and go. So you, so yeah, you I, I, toted the rock and uh, you play for a great coach, uh, Coach Will Barger, really cool guy. We've had him on here. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I was just looking at your numbers as a freshman and I, I take it you back someone up, but you're, it was just like, wow you know, six, almost six yards of carry. Um, but tell us about playing for Tuscarora. We know uh, you got a great program over there. You made the playoffs unbelievably successful team, been in the state championships championship more than once. Um, mm. But we know that that's a special group, special team. You got other great players on there. So just uh, talk to us and, you know, all the people from Tuscarora just about playing in that program. Yeah, so I, I grew up kind of around Tuscarora. Um, you know, my brother went here. He played here. Um, even with Burnett, I was still around. Um, so that's why in eighth grade, I actually got here early to start playing. I played freshman ball in eighth grade. Um, so I was, I've was i been in the program for a super long time. Um, and I, I remember back in eighth grade, after the practices, I would go and then practice with the varsity because freshman – practice ended a lot earlier than varsity so I'd go out to the varsity and practice with them you know I was getting coached by coach Burnett um you know like Justin Allen all those kind of 
greats to come out of our school. I got to kind of, you know, play with and be around to kind of learn really what Tuscarora football is about and everything like that, um, which that kind of went into freshman year, you know, getting a little bit of varsity playing time just because I've been around. I've been on scout team. You know, varsity wasn't super duper new. Um, and then other than that, I mean, the rest is just history. I mean, after freshman year, I think I got like four touchdowns, one in the playoffs, which is like John Champ. And then I started after that um, and really haven't looked back since. But I've had a great time since I've been at Tuscarora. The coaching change, I mean, with Coach Brennan and Coach Wills, and he, he's a great coach. Um, but, I mean, there's nothing like Tuscarora football for me, and I'm just proud to be, I guess, alumni now. Rusty, yeah. I'll let you ask the next question. But we got a, we had Coach Wheels on here. We told him we liked old school hip hop. And he said the, he incorporated Tupac Shakur into his English class. So we think he's really cool. Go, go ahead, yeah. Rusty. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to know a little bit about um, so you, you, you had those early years, ninth, tenth. You know, what, what was um, this senior year like? Uh, clearly, it was special, you know, to be recognized as the uh, All Met Offensive Player of the Year. Tell us a little bit about this season. Were there any specific games that uh, you enjoyed? Or, or just tell us a little bit maybe about your, your friendships and, and teammates uh, as a senior. Yeah, I mean, as a senior, I think your mindset changes a lot, you know, knowing that any playoff game could really be your last and you're playing for your brothers, you know. But, um, you know, this year as a whole, I think, was just a lot of a learning experience just to kind of have fun with playing football because, you know, I don't have to deal with the stress of recruitment, which is super yeah. stressful because, you know, that whole senior year I was committed. I knew where I was going. Yeah. Um. So that was just, you know, playing ball, just having fun, and that, that was super nice to do. But I think, like, as a whole, this senior year, um, I learned a lot just about my game and, like, what I'm capable of doing. Um, and I'm, think, I'm thinking just kind of, like, getting really ready for the next chapter, um, you know, college football and, you know, hockey. Great. Oh. So, um, Bryce, we talked a couple nights ago, and we were just, just chatting as friends or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I pointed out that you're going to a place where – just about everybody is the best player on their team. Everybody's big, strong, mm -hmm. fast. So, yeah. you know, I, I know you're the kind of kid that's going to go in there, not overconfident, but you're not going to will. A lot of kids go there and they're like, oh, my goodness. So let's – we know your strong points. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're a very good-sized bat, and you're going to get bigger, and you've got mm -hmm. unbelievable speed. Because when I watched you on Huddle – and I saw you in person, I was like, he's faster. So, and you're very cerebral, the way you follow your blocks. But to go to the next level, which you know, everybody's bigger, stronger, faster. And a lot of those runs you broke off in high school, you're not going to break off. That's just a fact. Yeah. What is it you think you need to work on individually to be the best college football player, the best Virginia Tech Hokie you can be? Um, I think really just – putting on some size because everyone's going to be bigger, you know, be able to hit, take, you know, 10, 20 hits. Cause I think that there's a big difference between 10, 20 hits in college versus 10, 20 hits in high school. Um, and then other than that, I mean, it's just becoming faster, quicker, you know, all around a better athlete. Like honestly, everything as an athlete for me, I think I can improve on, you know, get better as, um that's about it okay cool yeah so let me all right now uh when you do you know what you want to major in when you get to virginia tech uh, have, do you use any specific interest you have um uh, any areas mm -hmm. yeah i'm really interested in uh business and also real estate oh cool okay kirk were you a business major there yep i was finance and when you major in finance all the professors call it finance but um <laughs> okay, that's a pretty yeah. Bryce that's a pretty popular football player business school so um and like I told you 
it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get a minor in some kind of IT field because just yeah. have, even if you want to get like an you know, artificial intelligence uh, tech program on a big, you know, data analytics. But uh, if you go to business school, Bryce, you'll find out that the second year is their weeding out year. So your freshman year, you're basically taking, you know, somewhat normal classes, but that are uh, your first year, but that second year, they put quite a load on you. It's not like engineering, but uh, yeah, that'll be good. So um, we wanted to transition more to you, just you know, not necessarily, I mean, football is a big part of your life, but why don't you tell us more about, you know, um, you know, in your life thus far, some people that have been integral. It could be, you know, anybody, people that have inspired you, helped you, um, those kind of things. Gotcha. I'd say someone who's, you know, had a really big impact on my life is my grandfather. We call him Papa Duke. Um, you know, he was kind of, yeah, he was one that kind of taught me, um, taught me almost about football. Um, he lives in California because that's where my parents are from. But when I get to see him, you know, once or twice a year, we just chatted up about football. He actually coached at SDSU for, I think, a year or two. Um, he played college ball. So, I mean, he, he, he's a big football guy. So I think he was, he was one who really got me into it. So he's a big influence on me. You know, my parents too, dealing with all my crap and stuff like that, bringing me to practice, bringing me to um, the places to train, all that stuff, staying up late nights. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, all the stuff I do, but I think, I think those people are definitely some of the most important people to me right now. Right. Oh, cool. Let me ask you this. So um, you come from a football family. All right. You said mm -hmm. you, have, you have brother, um, um, siblings that played football. Um, yeah. When did you realize, like, wait a minute, I could maybe do this in college. Okay. I, I'm a little bit better, maybe a little faster, stronger than everybody else. And then when you started thinking about college, you're at, you committed to Virginia Tech going to your senior year. But did you, are you, did you start saying, hey, that's, that's a real possibility for me? Did, did you realize it or were people around you telling, uh, hey, you know, you're, and because let me tell you, this is also, people will say, oh, I want to play college football, but not everybody is Division One. Everybody wants to play Division One. Everybody's thinking Division One. But or or they're thinking, you know, every you know, I'm going to play the Power Five school. But you actually did it. So when did with some of these things? Like, was it a, a childhood dream? Because you know, hey, my you know, your grandfather played in college. When did you start saying that's a goal, and I'm going to take what do whatever it takes to get there? Yes, I mean, when I was young, that was always a dream of mine. But um, you know, you never really know how that's always going to unfold. But I, I'd say eighth grade. In freshman year, that was when I was hearing it from, like, other people, like my parents or people saying stuff to my parents, like, yo, like, this man, he might, he, might, he can do something. Like, he, he's a baller. Um, but I'd say at that time, I really didn't believe in myself too much because I, I felt like I hadn't seen, you know, crazy, like, I haven't seen something crazy yet. But sophomore year, for me, you know, getting like the 27 touchdowns as a sophomore starting, you know, bringing us to States. That's when like in my head, I was like, okay, like, yeah, I, I can do this. Like I can, I can go, I can go places. I can get my college paid for. And so after my sophomore year, that was just like, all right, like, let's get it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> okay. But right. I'd say definitely like freshman year, eighth grade, yeah. I was more of like hearing it from my parents and stuff like that. Um, but now nah, sophomore year is when that, when that really hit and, you know, all the college stuff started taking off. I made a Twitter. I started going crazy on everything and I actually ended up getting my first couple scholarships that same year too. Oh, wow. Okay. Rusty, that's a great question. But as soon as you asked it, I, I look over the stat line and it's like, uh, when a 15 or 16 year old kid gets 1800 yards in a very good football area and scores 23 touchdowns, I'm like, well, yeah. you know, that mail started coming and then he followed well, it up with 1600 yeah. yards. Well, I'll say this. You're right. Absolutely. But I'll tell you this also, uh, and, and I'm sure Bryce has friends that are dealing with this. It's one thing this COVID has impacted a lot of young athletes 
And what I mean by that is some kids, you know, from two years ago, uh, might have been their senior year, actually this spring, <laughs> this past year might have been their senior year, the transfer portal. A lot of people that are putting up those high school statistics and, 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 and different things, it's different now. So you're very blessed to still have that opportunity because a lot of these programs are using the transfer portal to get some of the athletes. So, yeah. uh, but then a lot of people are also, and what I guess what I meant by some of that was a lot of people think because I have, I'm a good, and, and it starts, you, you'll see kids have a good youth football, you play good, play well in youth football or JV, and I'm going to go play in Nebraska. It doesn't work like that all the time. But yeah, you put, you put up the stats, but one of the things I, I know is that um, what we've heard from your coaches, from other people is, you know, when it comes to recruiting, it's not just about those stats, Kirk. You know what it also tells me is that he's getting it done in the classroom. He's got a good character. Okay. He's the good teammate because for somebody to invest in, in the kids now, those are like those coaches jobs is clearly, you know, we can tell everything that their job is on the line. So they're investing in you, but you're blessed to have this opportunity. And, and again, it, and I know I go. My son is going through it now. He's a junior, and you know when he, he's been on recruiting trips to Penn State, you know uh, Maryland, uh, a couple times UNC. But it's just different. And so, um, yeah. I, but I, I tell you what, we are happy that you are a Hokey, bro. We are pulling for you. We love Virginia Tech football, and so uh, you, we are pulling for you to continue uh, your greatness there. Yeah, I wanted to just add a couple of quick things. Bryce has a chance of finishing with over a 4.0. So that says something about his work in the classroom. And Rusty's absolutely right. There are kids that are phenomenal that don't block, you know. Um, when the play's not you, are you blocking? Because that is huge in the college level. You know, coaches are looking at a lot of different things, you know. They're asking around about you. what's your body language like. You know, it's easy how you yeah. win. How do you lose? When something doesn't go right, what's your body language like? You know, when I see kids coming on the sideline and arguing with coaches, um, which you do see, recruiters see that. But uh, real quick for Hokie Nation, I know we're excited about you. Um, it's a good situation to come into. But can you tell us about your impression? Because as Hokies, we're all excited about Coach Brent Pry and your position coach. Uh, Bryce, what's his name? Stu? Stu Holt. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, the new regime? We know you've had your visit. You've talked to these guys and just give us your take as a player. Yeah. I mean, Coach Pry, I call him Pry the guy. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I love him. You know, my first time meeting him, I was at the school and we just kicked it off right from the start. Um, you know, he, from what I've seen, what I know, he's a great coach. Um, and I love the people that he's bringing in. Um, and all that stuff. I just can't wait to be coached by him. But then, you know, Coach Holt, um, I met him on my official. I know he's been coaching some great running backs. So that's, I'm super excited to be coached by him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he seems like a great coach. He called me when I got the all met and he was all excited and stuff like that. It's awesome. So I'm super excited about that. I'm just excited to, you know, get coached by him and Coach Pride and everyone else that he's bringing in. Rusty, I want to give you the opportunity to transition to our favorite part of this, and that's just when we start talking about life and music and uh, movies. And, Bryce, we'll be brutally honest with you because we come from the golden age of rap and movies and streaming. But, um, you know, I, I did um, want to ask you real quick <clears> – <throat> Um, is were students in when you when you were there on the eleventh or were they gone when you went on your official? Oh yeah, yeah, there were uh, still students there, ah. but they were like they were taking their uh, finals and stuff like that. Okay, so it was a little tank. Yeah. All right. What'd you think though about the scene? No, it, it was super fun. Um, yeah. I had a great time. I had my my host was Malachi, the running back. Yep. So they kind of showed me around. Um, I had a great time with them. Yeah, and it was a, it was a super fun, honestly. Yeah, I, oh, I'll cool. point out this: without football, it's a very special place to go to school. Without traffic, you can get there fast. 
you know, 10 minutes away, you, you can go hiking. It's a great town, you know, at our age, it was very small, but uh, I think uh, real quick, you'll understand you're part of the family, but you're going to understand why we're such big fans of why we love going to school there. And we're so vociferous about it, but Rusty, why don't you transition us to the fun stuff? We like start talking about right. pop culture and uh, hold on. What's this band? Goo up was it goo up goo up. That's a new one for me. I got to check out. I uh, learned Polo. Oh, yeah. Hold on. We got goo up Polo G. I'm going to let you take over, but he, um, Little baby, little Dirk. You need to tell these rappers that little John and little Wayne took those uh, little things. And then he's got uh, Meek Mill. So we, we have some research. Go ahead, Rusty. Yeah, so cool. One of the things like we, we like to do is, is get, get to know a little bit more about the person. We, we, know, we know about stats. We know about football. We know about Virginia Tech. And I actually do this uh, when I interview people for jobs that come work uh, with me. Um, and so I want to know about the person because you know what? It's one thing when everybody knows this about you, but this is this other parts that, you know, people go, oh, well, I can relate. Okay, he likes these shows. I, I know even in my job when I wasn't, we, you know, people started watching Game of Thrones. You're like, on Monday, you know, before we start talking about budget stuff, we're talking about Game of Thrones. So one <laughs> of the things we like to find out about is, what what is Bryce like outside of football? So you know um, when it, we I, first thing I want to know is we know you you're, you're a fan of hip hop. Um, do you ever listen to any of the old school hip hop? Uh, and if you do, what 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 is old school to you? Because I, we've had people come on the show, and 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 what's old school to them is, is still relatively new. Very new. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, I, I listen to honestly everything. It just depends on, like, you know, if I'm really rocking with it or not. Um, but I love, like, Lil Wayne. I remember when I was probably, I don't know, 12 years old, I used to always listen to Lil Wayne. That was probably when he was, you know, really doing his stuff. Um, but I, I don't listen too much to, like, Easy e and, like, stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, you guys probably listen to him all the time or something like that. But I don't really listen to those people. I love, like, Mac Miller. Um, and all those guys, some of the greats. Yeah, we grew up um, e even before. Yeah, so definitely easy. But then we actually grew up when there was uh, the Sugar Hill Gang. I'm a big Run DMC fan. Yes. I I was a now when it came to the Biggie versus Tupac, I was definitely in the uh, Biggie camp. So all right, we're good. So we know you like hip hop, but let me ask you this: what 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 are you, what's hot with you right now in terms of? Uh, do, you, do you, for entertainment? Do you like going to the movies? Are there any specific shows you like to stream? You know, are you Netflix, uh, you know, the stuff on HBO Max. What, what do you like to do in terms of, and what style of movie or show are you into? If you're even into that. Um, I honestly don't really watch too many like shows and stuff like that, but I do enjoy, um, like my favorite movie I'd say is The Wolf of Wall Street. I love that movie. It's good one. Um, a real good movie. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's definitely a great movie. Um, but I'm more – I just watch a lot of, like, TV when it comes to, like, watching college ball. That's mm -hmm. kind of really what I what I spend most of my time watching. Mm -hmm. um, but okay. when it comes – if I watch, like, a show or something, it'll be, like, YouTube. Okay. That's cool. Do you, what about professional sports? Do you have any favorite professional football, basketball, baseball team to follow? Um – I mean, honestly, I don't really have, like, a favorite NFL team. I just love watching anybody. I mean, yeah, it'd be easy to say I like the Redskins because I'm from around here. But, honestly, yeah. I just, I just, <laughs> yeah. It's your not, they've never been good in your lifetime. So. They've never yeah, been exactly. good. Right. Sorry. It's hard so, I just kind of watch, watch to watch and watch my position, really. Just, you know, watch these people and see what they do. Try to translate it to my game. Yeah. Cool. Now, we know your favorite college team is Virginia Tech, but um, any other college teams you like? Like, I got, I have on North Carolina shorts because I'm a big mm -hmm. North Carolina basketball fan, except when they play the Hokies. And, by the way, we've upset them when they're number one more than once. But mm -hmm. uh, any any college teams, like maybe from your family, San Diego State or any any, any of those? Um, when I was really young, I loved Oregon. That was kind of one of my – and yeah. I honestly, I think it was just because colors and like they always got the newest Nike stuff and all that. Yeah. yeah. But when I was younger, I, I definitely loved Oregon. 
Oh, you passed the test, man. You didn't say UVA, so you're good to go. Yeah. Right? Oh, so, so, so just so you know, Virginia Tech's my favorite football program, but the best basketball programs in the state are the two schools I went to, VCU and UVA. UVA, um, until they, they these last couple of years, uh, VCU had been been you know to the final four and we routinely beat virginia tech in basketball routinely um especially when kirk and i were when we were coming out of school and we were in the same conference the metro conference and so virginia tech uh good program playing at acc but it's the third best basketball program in the state just just like first two schools i went to okay. this Go year ahead. this year jam you might have something to say about yeah it. yeah they might be pretty decent all right so when I went to Virginia Tech, the food was horrible, terrible. <laughs> now they got like the best food ever. So yeah. we, we like to talk about food. So why don't you tell us, we always have this question, if you could have one meal for the rest of your life, because this says a lot about your personality or whatever, what would your meal be? Would it be Taco Bell? Would it be lobster? You know? Um, Probably like. Steak, potatoes, and like green beans or something like that. I mean, you can't go wrong. Okay. Like that, that'd be breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, and I'm cooling it. Okay. Well, I will. Go ahead. I know what you're going to say. No, I think you put those vegetables in there. I'm glad. Good stuff. Your metabolism, bro, (laughs) at 30 and 40 and 50, it could be totally different. But uh, by the way, (laughs) By the way, um, I asked him, I'm going over to Rusty's house to watch a Georgia um, Michigan game. And I asked Bryce where he was watching the game. And he goes, oh, I'm watching at the crib. And I'm like, I knew I liked this kid. So <laughs> anyway, so, um, so you got Virginia Tech coming up and, um, you know, you got a great situation to uh, go into. Looks like maybe business. Um, so you're heading up there in a couple of weeks. Probably be mm-hmm. my guess is in uh, summer school. How do you feel? How much are you looking forward to running out of that tunnel to intercept? Uh, I'm so excited. I mean, when yeah. it comes to like on game day, I kind of get to do that. I mean, there's there's nothing like it when the, all the fans are there just jumping. Like, dude, it, it gets it gets you going crazy. So I can't wait. I'm excited. Finally, it's gonna make it happen though. Yeah, I, I have good. heard I have heard this. I've heard some young guys that need to play, like whether it be special teams or whatever. A lot of guys start off on special teams and work their way in the lineup or whatever, or spend a year on special teams. Yeah, they get, they get so excited they start hyperventilating, and they're like, <laughs> "I'm serious. I've heard this. They can't do the kickoff." So, but we we know you'll be good to go. Um, before we close out. You want to say anything uh, to Hokie Nation who is looking forward to having you? Anything you want to say? Um, you know, I'm just ready to work. Can't wait to see where how everything unfolds. Um, you know, let's let's just make it happen. Let's turn everything around and be great. All right, Rusty. Good stuff. Why don't yeah. you close us out with uh, where folks can find us? Um, on our social media. Okay, so uh, you can find us, of course, on, on, on YouTube at the Kirk and Bird Show. Um, you're also, on, we're on Twitter at the Kirk and Bird, just the Kirk and Bird. Um, you can also find us, we, we're audio only, but we, you can find us with all of the normal platforms with uh, Spotify, uh, Google, um apple amazon uh, podcast yep all those um but a lot of people really we, we, we really had a great following is with the youtube channel um because everybody likes to see my pretty face and uh and so <laughs> but that's that's going to be a big one and one thing i asked uh bryce that we've done is we've interviewed a lot of athletes uh you know spread the word but i know people are going to want to follow and know what you've been up to so we're gonna we want to let hokey nation uh let's see if you can uh, top some of the other high school athletes that we've had on the show. Um, we've had, you know, Bishop Ireton, Hilton High School, Potomac High School, uh, Oscar Smith athletes. We recently just had Stonebridge uh, players. Um, and so get the word out. Let's see if you can get 
uh, Tuscarora to give you a lot of following uh, on our YouTube channel of people we'd like for you to go ahead, uh, not just watch this, but subscribe to the show because we're going to have a lot of great interviews like this going forward. And let's see if Bryce can top some of those other athletes. I think right now, Stonebridge, they have about mm -hmm. eight, close to 800 views in three days. Maybe. So Bryce, see if you can get Hokie Nation to uh, top that. Um, and then I just want to close by saying, man, I, I you know, I, I am uh, looking forward to you playing. Um, I want you to go there, enjoy yourself, get your education. I'm very proud of you. We definitely pulling for you. Uh, and if you ever uh, need to come back to this show for anything over the years, please come back. Let us know how you're doing. Look, I, I hope you go there. I hope you win the Heisman. I hope you go to the league. But if you don't, what I, I just want you to continue to be um, a good young man, get your education and be productive person in society. And one of the things I've always, even whether it's my job or even with um, some of the kids I've coached in football or track is make sure you're going back and you're pulling the next kids up. So, you know, whether you're a volunteer in youth sports, whether it's in your church, whether you're just in the community, um, somebody helped you out. So I would always say, take the opportunity to to go and pull somebody else up uh, because that name Bryce Duke means something. That name means something to a lot of people. And so if you can continue to do great things and be positive, you you don't know who's watching this, what 10 year old is watching this and saying, I, I want to, um, I want to be like uh, Bryce Duke. Bryce, so, your video thank you very much out. for being on the show. Yeah, there you go. Thank okay. you. Yeah, we want to thank you. We want to wish you the best of luck and um, really appreciate you coming on here. Um, a magical part of your life that you'll never forget is about to start on the 14th. Go Hokies, go. And the Kirk and Bird with Bryce Duke. Uh, deuce, the deuce. Oh, yeah. The double deuce. The double deuce. <laughs> with the bar. I had to say this. I'm sorry. We're supposed to close. The double deuce is the bar in Roadhouse that Patrick Swayze is the bouncer at. It's the cheesiest movie in the history of the world, but it probably should have won the Academy Award. The, Dalton is the guy's name, and it is a cool movie, and I don't know why we closed on that, but Bryce, thank you. We are out of here, Kirk and Bird. Right, Rusty? Deuce, yep, we're out. Thanks, Bryce. Continue All right, man. Bryce. God bless you. Appreciate you, big man. You. All right, take care. God bless.